perfect. Thank you. If you really want enlightenment, then just lighten up. What is friendship? How many of us have really, honestly, truly stopped to really, really, really think about this important question? I don't mean moral or ethical debates. I don't mean egocentric opinions going back and forth. I don't mean friends lists and Valentine's Day cards and and who's the most popular kid at school and can you be their friend and I don't mean an exchange of oh what has this person done for me and what have I done for them I don't mean a contest I mean forget all of the neurotic societal materialistic crap I mean, really, like, from the heart, like, deep pondering. Have you asked what yourself, what is friendship? What does it mean to you? Better yet, what, what would you like it to mean? What do you think it should mean? I mean, what do you think it should mean? Not what opinion did you hear someone say about it that you happen to think sounds cool or sound correct or whatever, like... What does it mean to you? What do you think it should be? And you know, this is one of those types of philosophical freaking questions that pops into my mind every now and again, especially, you know, when I've had very uplifting, life-changing sorts of experiences. And I've been working in my garden lately. And at the risk of sounding cliché, although I have to sound cliché, because humans only relate to each other on common frames of reference points, otherwise it just sounds like a bunch of blah, 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 and we don't know what the fuck any of us are talking about. I was in my garden, and I thought to myself, as I was kind of paying attention to what I was doing with my garden, you know, Friendship is kind of like a garden. Yeah, life is like a box of chocolate. No, I'm not going to get all lame Forrest Gump and shit on you. Don't worry. Um, no, seriously. It's like, if you really look at it, I mean, if you look at gardening from, uh, from the point of view of enjoying it, not like from the work and maintenance materialistic point of view, but like when someone really enjoys gardening... Um, such as I do. Both the person and the garden are getting something out of it. It's, it's, it's a mutual exchange, and, and it's natural. It's not obligatory. Like, no one's obligated to go grow a garden. <laughs> you know, I mean, no one's going to do that unless they really enjoy doing it. And obviously... A garden does its thing naturally. You know, it's like, you don't have to pay the plants to grow. You don't have to convince the plants to grow. Um, it's just, you know, nature does what it does automatically. And so it's, you know, your choice to either align with that or not. And if you're growing a garden, if you enjoy doing such things, then obviously it's easy to align with that if you enjoy it so then it's just a matter of going about the journey of learning how to do it and continuing to get better at it through experience and a lot of it's going to be trial and error you're going to have weeds pop up sometimes um you're going to have difficulty getting certain plants to grow and other plants are going to grow way too much and <laughs> sometimes you might go nuts trying to figure out you know, what to do with all that extra abundance of that one species of, of plant that's just growing too damn much. <laughs> and 
you know, there's just all these di dynamic, you know, variables about it, and it, it can be challenging, and at times it can be a little unnerving and stressful, I mean, you know, it's just, it really is like a friendship, because, like, a good friend can be all of those things, but in this context, a good friendship is mutually beneficial, albeit not perfect, never perfect, wouldn't be any fun if it was perfect anyway, <laughs> mutually beneficial, not perfect, but rewarding, and based in this appreciation to where, you know, it's something you appreciate, and you really enjoy being a part of it, even though sometimes your friend might drive you crazy, and you might sometimes feel like absolutely fucking killing them, and grabbing your hands around their throat, choking the shit out of them, you know, it's like there, there will be days like that, <laughs> but overall, a good friendship happens naturally, you know, just like a garden. It's nothing that has to be forced. It has its ups and downs, it has its good days and its bad days, so on and so forth. And not to mention, when people look at these things materialistically, you know, I've noticed that we're all taught by society to look at the beginning of a friendship. You know, as as if it's supposed to have a set beginning, like there's this like this line that says like, okay, begin here, like it's a race, right? And then it's like, start your engines, and like we're navigating like this obstacle course racetrack. Okay, so it's like we're beginning friendship, we're driving along here, and there's all these, you know, obstacles and tight turns, and asshole, cut me off, bitch, you know, so it's like we're going through this friendship, you know, sometimes a little too slow, other times at, at really high speed, and then there's the quote-unquote middle of the friendship, and then the dreaded end of the friendship. And people think that, like, when a friendship ends, it's got to be this, either this, you know, sorrowful drifting away, or this big, like, nuclear explosion, like your world has to come crashing the fuck down. And, you know, it kind of dawned on me. There doesn't have to be a beginning. There doesn't have to be a middle. There doesn't even have to be an end. Because what you consider to be a, a new friendship is just... It's an evolution of, of one thing to another. I mean, anybody you consider to be your friend, what were they before they were your friend? Maybe they were an acquaintance. Maybe they were a co-worker. Maybe they first were watching you on DeviantArt or YouTube or um, your Facebook page or whatever. But still, they, they were something. They were something before then. And even before they knew you existed, <laughs> they were still something before you knew them and they knew you. You guys kind of, like, just evolved into each other's existence over a natural course of time. And this was a nice and easy flow, and it just evolved, and it, you know, y you started noticing each other more and interacting with each other more. And I've, I've noticed, too, that there doesn't have to be an... an end to a friendship either, as a matter of fact, for, well, a friendship can become dysfunctional, obviously, when a friendship is based on, on apathy, or 
you know, like, some sort of, like, political agenda or whatever. But that's not really a friendship, in my view. That's like one person being an asshole to another. <laughs> a friendship, again, is this mutual, natural exchange. But there are these friendships that, you know, maybe once they were good, but now they're, like, on life support. Or they're, like, a zombie. So it's like... It's like a garden where it doesn't rain much anymore, and no one's tending to it. So either it's total chaos, or it's mostly barren, to where, you know, not many of the original species uh, survived, and, you know, of what's there, there's not really much there, and it's, it's, still, it's still there, but it's kind of wastelandy. You know what I mean? So, it's like... Things are just... Evolution and change, basically. You shift into things, you shift out of other things. It's just, it's just this evolution and change, and... When these things happen naturally, it's pretty cool. Um, and kind of everything seems to get set in its, in its proper place. Just like nature deals with itself and, you know, plants out outside and forests and, you know, so on and so on. But when we interfere with all this apathetic, egocentric, materialistic, societal shit, then just like humans seem to have a tendency of doing to the planet, disrupting nature and, you know, fucking up ecosystems, um, we can throw off the natural flow of what friendship is supposed to be. So it's like, you can have this, like, zombie friendship, like, this walking dead um, ghost of a friendship that, you know, maybe you and the other person might still occasionally you know, cooperate on a temporary business alliances or something, or share resources. Maybe you're friendly with each other. Maybe, you know, maybe on the surface, you know, everything's completely cool. You know, you can hang out at the same parties, have a few laughs, drink a few beers, exchange resources. Everything's cool on that materialistic surface level. There's, like, no conflict. There's no problem. But there's no more appreciation if, like, the friendship is just, like, turned into, like, a zombie friendship. There's no more appreciation. There's there's no more enjoyment. And, unfortunately, just like society wants you to think that in order to work and, and be successful and, and productive to get happiness, you have to suffer and struggle and go through all these policies and protocols and steps and, you know, all this fucking neurotic bullshit that's totally opposite anything productive. We do the exact same thing within our, within our friendships, and it's an easy trap to fall into. So, if a friendship isn't based in mutual appreciation, then it's not a friendship. I mean, it's relations with another human, and those might be really cool, chill flow relations. But it's not a friendship. And if this is how you've defined friendship for all your life, because society's taught you to define it, and if you really want more meaningful friendship in your life, like that meaningful exchange of appreciation, sort of a bond with all those you consider to be friends, then you might want to ask yourself, is this what I'm willing to do? Or am I going to stick with you know, what I've, what I, what society has taught me, this dysfunctional way, or am I going to see it as a reasonable reality to, 
to, am I worthy? Am I deserving of this more awesome experience? Or do I have to settle for the misery and shit cesspool of, of degrading filth that this society has become and, and taught us to be? So think on that, guys. I mean, just really go in heart-centered and think about that and ask yourself, what would you rather have in your life? And then go for it, move in that direction, have fun, live life, enjoy it. And this video is about to be up, so catch you later. Love y'all, see ya.